Universal Music Group took my music off of TikTok. I am Barack Obama. I am Barack Obama. Now, this isn't just me, right? I'm just Eldre. I only have one album that was distributed through UMG, so I'm kind of good. It was that classical lo-fi album I did with Dolce Gramophone, and they're under UMG, so I caught a stray, bro. I'm not gonna lie, I caught a stray. But essentially, what happened is, you know, all these platforms, they have to pay a licensing fee or whatever. They have to pay something to these labels and stuff to have their music on their platforms. And I guess their contract was up and UMG was like, yo, bro, we need more dough. We need more bread. And TikTok was like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like all these other labels, they're good with the rate, bro. Why, why you want to come and start trying to mix shit up or whatever? And UMG was like, all right, bet. Like if you, if you going to act like that, we're going to slide all them shits off your platform. Let's see what you do without Drake on your platform. So a lot of people didn't think it would really happen, but sure enough, today is February 1st, woke up, it's all muted, bro. It's all muted. And the only way I found out, or the only way, the way I found out is because I recently used that Ice Spice song, thank you to shit, you're not even the fart. But yeah, so my, my Ice Spice video was muted, bro. So I guess maybe whatever label she's under is also under UMG. So whose sounds are disappearing? Taylor Swift. BTS, oh no, not BTS. Drake, Ariana Grande, Bad Bunny, SZA, Billie Eilish, Adele, Olivia Rodrigo, The Weeknd, Rihanna, only to name a few, bro. Only to name a few. So yeah, so if you, I mean, I'm not gonna read this shit right now. I'm not a reader. But yeah, so they took it all off, bro. Like go through TikTok right now. I'm like, damn, this sucks, this sucks, blah, 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 but hold on. Although UMG took down all the music, I see this as an opportunity for the independent artist to really shine. I mean, I do lo-fi, bro, so you know what I'm saying? I don't know how much I'm gonna benefit from it, but this is an opportunity for us to get in the background of all these videos, you know what I'm saying? So hypothetically, if I were an independent rapper right now, I'm, I'm, I'm doing 10 videos a day right now trying to get my my song that might sound a little similar to Drake or Travis Scott. Is Travis, is Travis on this list, bro? No, please don't be Travis. But yeah, I look at it as an opportunity. My album also was affected. Like I said, the album I did with Dolce Gramophone is my lo-fi classical album. It's called Lo-Fi Symphony. Luckily for me, I mean, not luckily, but none of those songs went viral. A few, they did well on like streaming and all that kind of stuff, but none of them went viral on TikTok. So I'm not really that down bad because of it. But think about it. We're talking Drake, blah, blah, blah. If little old Eldre, the little lo-fi guy was affected by this, think about the tons and tons of smaller artists that just got, you know, some shit popping. Maybe they just got signed. Maybe they're just distributing. Cause remember, Dolce Gramophone is the label that I released that album with. It wasn't UMG, but they are under UMG. So I'm pretty sure there's, I don't know how big the list is, but there are so many small labels that are like affiliated with UMG. So I saw a lot of really sad examples, bro. Like there's people whose songs just started going viral, gone, bro, muted. So they potentially were about to have like life-changing career. Like imagine, imagine like when my song Steven Universe started to pop off and it started changing my life. And then all of a sudden, like it just got muted, which happened before. It actually happened twice. But yeah, it sucks, bro. I've seen a lot of people talking, like a lot of people just really getting into their bag with the content creation. Things just now starting to pop off for them. And now it's kind of like stagnant, bro. It's kind of stagnant. So it sucks. It's unfortunate, especially for smaller artists that are signed under some of these smaller labels. But it is an opportunity for all of us. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's unfortunate. But like, if I if I were any of you right now and you guys make music, I would be, I already did a post today. I did a post today. Can I pull this up on screen? I did a post today, I'll pull it up. Mind you, my TikTok has been in the dumps. Like I don't get good engagement anyway, but I posted this video with a remix I did. Let's see if we can get that in focus. So that's a Billie Eilish remix, but like, tell me why I'm getting hella comments and people saying like, oh, they're replacing their sounds with my sounds now and it has like you know almost 4,000 views which is way more than any of my recent videos so if i were you start start making remix well no hold on because i did post an old drake remix and it got clapped immediately but it wasn't clapped before it was still up so i'm like oh, okay bet we're gonna start having people use my remixes 
instead of the Drake songs. Once I posted that, they caught wind of it. Remixes clapped. So at first that was my initial strategy, like, oh, let's do the remix thing. I mean, there's certain songs like that one that didn't get clapped yet. Don't tell anybody. But um, yeah, I don't know. Their content ID might hit different for certain songs. So you're really going to have to switch it up. I don't know, but that's a play. That's one play. So yeah, one play is to do remixes. Another play, again, we're producers, but weaving that narrative of what's going on with UMG into your marketing for a bit, at least right now, at least for the next few days. Start talking about, oh, UMG's taking all these artists down. I'm an independent artist, blah, blah, blah. That's gonna be a hot topic for the next couple of days. Get on that, bro. Get on that. What else? What's another, what's another way that we can benefit from this? Just in general, like if you wanna start working with artists or something like that, that's another way, but that's, got, that's a long process because low key, this might not be a forever thing. Like they might bring it back anytime. Like who knows? Somebody's gonna fold. We'll see. We'll see who folds first. But if it doesn't happen, bro, I'm telling you, like right now is a great time to be an independent musician. That's for sure. Why are you with UMG? So yeah, I personally, I'm not signed to UMG or anything. I just released an album through a label that is an umbrella. I mean, that is under UMG. So that's all it is, bro. I released one album. They technically own it. I own like a percentage of it. You know how these label things go. Like I don't own the album. It's all on them. So if you're an artist who signed to any, any label that's under UMG and that's all you have out, like you don't own your music, bro. So who knows, like this might be something that really tells artists like, no, I'm not doing anything with labels, bro. I'm not gonna do anything with labels because look what's happening. They got absolutely no control over their own music. I mean, I'll keep it a bean too. Like even with my song, with my album that I released through UMG. Bro, even while we were marketing the album, I would upload a YouTube video that they told me to upload. <laughs> They're like, okay, this Thursday, upload this, blah, 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 and we're gonna do this and that. I upload the video, come the release day, literally the day of the release or right before the release, it's blocked. It's blocked on my own channel. And then we gotta go through the whole process of getting it unblocked. And by then, you know, it was a dud. It was a dud, the, in, the engagement was killed by YouTube and it kind of just fizzled out. So like, that's something to think about when working with labels. Like you really, not only are they, you know, they're helping most people out though. Like I'm not against labels, but like, it's tough, dude. Like they can help you, but then you just have to remember like you're giving up so much. So it's just something to think about. What I release with a label against, sure. My deal was great, bro. Like we just did one album, no strings attached. I would do another album with them in a heartbeat because it was super fun, bro. I got to do so many things I've never done before. So I'm not against labels at all. It's just like, this is just a whole nother conversation now. This is really gonna show people like, all right, like, do I really wanna sign? Like you think about all the people like Ice Spice, for example, or even like Pink Panthers. They blew up on TikTok, but they immediately signed. I don't know how good their deals were, but they immediately signed. Part of me is like, did they need to? I don't know, but they did start working with a lot of bigger artists and I'm sure maybe that happened because of the labels. Who knows, bro? Who knows what kind of structure someone like Pink Panthers who's getting millions and hundreds of millions of stream when she signs to a label, what, what's the plan of action? Are they like really taking over and really setting things up properly? Or could she have done it all by herself? You know, who knows, bro? So yeah, unfortunate situation, but try to use it to your advantage and hopefully any of these tips I just mentioned helps you out. Yeah, catch you in the next one. I am Barack Obama. I am Barack Obama.